Hello everyone, this is Western New York Fly Guy. Um, I'm going to do a video today about what setups I use while I'm steelheading and while I'm salmon fishing here in the fall in Western New York. Um, I've gotten a lot of responses from you guys about what kind of setups that I do use. So my two main setups I'm going to show you here today are an 8 weight and a 10 weight. So the one I'm holding in my hand here is an 8 weight rod. It's an Echo Solo. They run for about 125, 130 bucks or so on Cabela's and various other retailers. Um, and on this setup, I have a Cabela's RLS Plus fly reel. These um, go on sale pretty frequently, but this particular reel retails for about 125 bucks as well. Um, it's a great quality reel. I can't say better things about it. Um, and that's pretty much for all Cabela's stuff I've found is really good quality and uh, a fair price in terms of comparing it to Orvis or Patagonia. So I, Cabela's is my go-to retailer. Um, so on the reel, I have 150 yards of 30 pound Dacron backing. Uh, it's white, so you can't really see it, but you can see kind of where it transitions here from white into the green. And the green is the fly line itself. This is Cabela's Prestige Plus fly line. It's a, you know, kind of a low grade uh, line, but it fits really well on this rod, so I don't have any problems with it. So on this particular rod, I've got um, a nymph on, so it's just a little stonefly type nymph, and uh, this is fished under a strike indicator uh, using the technique, it's called a dead drift. Uh, dead drifts are really effective in kind of slow water areas where you don't really need to get down uh, too fast, um, but it can also be used in some quicker water areas, it's just a little harder to fish. So. On this particular setup, you can see my strike indicator there, it's right next to my head. And uh, that you want to set deeper than how deep it is, because you want your fly to be kind of bouncing along the bottom as it drifts downstream. Now you don't want it to be so deep where you're getting hung up all the time, but you want it deep enough so where your fly is constantly bouncing up and down off the bottom. Um, and to get your fly there, you can either tie your flies so that they have lead wire uh, in the fly to get it down deep, um, or you can also use split shot. So I'm using some pretty small split shot here. You can see um, I think that's a size one uh, split shot, both of them. But I generally put all of my split shot all in one spot uh, or else if you space them out when you roll cast or do some kind of casting you get stuck in the tree or line wraps around the tip of your rod. Uh, it tends to act like a set of nunchucks and it gets itself all tangled up and uh, it's just not a real great situation. But you can buy these in um, little wheels. I got this one at Gander Mountain. Um, this is really nice because it holds the split shot once it's out of the actual case itself. Um, but it also labels which, which size they are. So you got A, B, 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 1, 4, and 6. Um, so that's really nice and handy to have on the stream so you're not trying to fiddle with the split shot in your hand and putting it on your line. That way it doesn't fall in the stream either. Um, so this dead drift technique, I like to fish when the water's slow and, and deep. Like if I'm fishing a nice deep pool, I'll use dead drift. Um, but I can al I'll also use a dead drift if the water is a little lower too. But sometimes I'll fish it without an indicator and you got a what's called high stick. So you want to, you'll keep your rod tip nice up and high to keep your fly line off the water. So this setup, again, it's an eight weight, it's nine feet long, um, Echo Solo. I like the Echoes. It's a little bit of a slower action rod. Uh, I use this a lot in the winter time. I've had troubles with the St. Croix uh, and the stiffer graphite rods of breaking in the winter time. Uh, whether you get stuck on a, on a tree on a back cast or you hook into a good fish and you set the hook. I've had tips break off. Um, I just haven't been too pleased with the St. Croix in the winter. Um, but I'll use an 8 weight more for, for the trout. Trying to use an 8 weight on a salmon, it gets really difficult. There's just not enough backbone in the rod uh, to get the job done. Actually, in my latest video uh, where I fished and the salmon I caught, you can see I'm really putting a lot of stress into the rod uh, to get that salmon in. And that even wasn't uh, a huge salmon. It was a fairly mediocre sized fish, but I had struggles getting it in without a net especially. So the next 
rod I'm going to talk about is really my go-to salmon rod. Uh, this is a 10 weight. This really has a nice stiff uh, blank on the rod. This is a St. Croix Legend Ultra. It's a little bit older, uh, older model. The Legend Ultras I think retail for maybe $300 or so. I haven't looked in a long time but uh, it's a more expensive rod, higher end, and I like to fish this with the salmon. It's a little less delicate so when you cast your line slaps down on the water a little bit more than uh, uh, an 8 weight or a 7 weight would. So if you're going for a really delicate presentation, the 10 weight probably isn't your best bet unless you're a seasoned fly fisherman and you've really got your casting mechanics down. So uh, on this rod again I've got uh, Cabela's Prestige Plus fly reel uh, again with the Cabela's Prestige Plus fly line and then I've got 200 yards of backing on this spool because it's a bigger uh, bigger reel. So this, another technique that I'll talk to you about um, when I'm fishing for the trout and the salmon, I will swing flies. So you can go and look up on YouTube, but maybe I'll post a link in the description of various diagrams on how to swing flies. But typically you're swinging flies like woolly buggers. This is a variation on a woolly leech woolly bugger that I tie. Um, it's a, got great action in the water. Uh, and swinging flies is pretty exciting. You can feel the fish take for the most part. So it, it, it's a different experience than dead drifting. Dead drifting can get really boring, uh, whereas swinging flies takes a little bit more finesse. Um, so this, you can see I don't have any strike indicator on here. So that's to get my fly down near the bottom. This, the, the swinging fly technique is generally used in faster sections of water where you don't need to get down as deep, um, but you need to get down fast. That's the key to swinging flies. You don't need to get down very deep, but you need to get to that to that target zone quickly. And the target zone is, you know, up and off the bottom, maybe three inches or so. So you can, again, weight your fly when you tie it to get it down deep, or you can use split shot. On this particular setup, I, last time I was swinging a fly, I didn't need uh, to get down deep very quickly, plus this fly is weighted pretty heavily, so I only had to use a really small split shot. Um, the specs on the rod, on this rod, it's another nine foot rod. A lot of rods are typically nine feet or so in the six to ten weight ranges, six, even six to twelve. I've got a twelve weight that's, that's nine feet long, that's really stiff. Um, but this is another nice rod, really beefy guides. Uh, and this is, like I said, I use this for the salmon. It's a St. Croix Legend Ultra. It's the green rod that you see in a lot of my videos, uh, especially when I'm fishing for the salmon. Um, fishing for trout, this rod is kind of boring because you can almost horse them in. There's really no play to the fish. So um, I'm starting to transition off of using the 10 weight now that the salmon run is kind of progressing and uh, I don't have to need, I don't need that backbone quite as much. So. Those are the two techniques and the two types of rods that I use. Really, generally for my setup, I've got a fly and a split shot, maybe about a foot to 18 inches up, depending on the weight of the fly. But uh, my setup really depends a lot on uh, what technique I'm using, whether it be dread, dead drift or swinging. Um, and it also depends on where I think the fish are in the water column. So. If a fish is really close to the bottom, I want to get down there quick if I'm in fast water. If it's slow water, I don't need to get down as, as fast, but I need to get down there. Um, so you can post your specific questions in the link. Um, I'll probably do another video sometime in the near future on leader setup. Uh, that's kind of a crucial thing. I buy, for, for beginners, buying tapered leaders uh, is a really great start. Um, you can start looking up how to tie uh, your own leaders. American Angler, the magazine, had a really great article about making your own leaders not too long ago. Uh, so I'll post some links in the description if I can find them for those building your own leader articles and maybe in the near future I will do a video on how to build your own leaders. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys that have contacted me about uh, my setups and hopefully you guys can get out on the water and do some fishing. So, tight lines, everyone.